Dear Edwin, my personal failures have skyrocketed. With my mounting debts, I sought a quick solution. <laughs> oh, bullshit. Edwin, before Anne left me tonight, she said I've been trying to live up to some false idea of what a hero should be. Maybe she's right. Seven years ago, I made a plan to have 1951 be the year I started my own business. But I couldn't save the money, and now, I owe 14,000 to a man called the Ferret. I've never bailed out before, but these are ruthless men. And to keep you and the family out of harm's way, it's safer if I leave Dallas. When I can repay this loan, oh my God. I don't know when I'll repay this loan, but if it is of any comfort, you have been like a father to me. I pray you can forgive me. Your son-in-law, Arthur. Oh, man, I thought this car was going up. No. Down. Going down. Man, this ain't my lucky day. Here I am so close to finding this guy. I guess a few more minutes won't matter, huh? No. This isn't happening. This cannot be happening. It's just a fuse. Man, this man's probably heading to the fuse box right now. What are you, an electrician? No. Cop. Yeah! Trapped with a cop. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, but I'm a long way from home. Yeah? Where are you from? Pine Barrens, New Jersey. Home of the Jersey Devil, you heard of it, huh? Sorry, no. Eh, it's all right, not many people have. It's got a beautiful forest, though. It's great for kids. Hey, I 
got two little boys, huh? They're great. Yeah, they're great. Yeah. <laughs> and it likes to rain down here in Texas, don't it? So you say you're looking for some guy, huh? Yeah. You know he's in this building? I got a tip he was. I got some help for him. <laughs> well, maybe this guy doesn't want to be helped. <laughs> this kind of reminds me of a story. I said I was from Pine Barrens. Well, I grew up in the Bronx. Six brothers, three sisters. We called the old man Pop because he'd read a pop you in the mouth and look at you, you know? So you learn to make yourself scarce. In school, yeah, that's for creeps. So when I was 15, me and a buddy, we started on racket. Shoplifting at first, then cat burgling because uh, we thought we was cool like cats, you know? No, I don't know. What is your point? I'm getting there. The thing was, even though I thought I was slick for never getting caught, down deep I was a no good bastard. And then all of a sudden there's a war on and Uncle Sam wants me. I mean, nobody wanted me back home. So off I go to finally do something. I die trying. Well, some lieutenant sees me run into a machine gun nest and knock out about six krauts. So they up and make me a sergeant. So there I was, 21, with 15 men in my platoon. Hell, they was boys. Olis was 19. Half of them used to cry themselves to sleep at night. Not that I blame them, though. Because it was rough, see? And cold. Hey, these kids in Crazy Joe. <laughs> they call me G.I. Crazy Joe. When was this, Joe? When of 44 in France. You were under Bradley? Yeah. It's Ralph. What? My name, it's Ralph. Oh. Sorry. Yeah, I know. I saw your passport. That's your last smoke. Oh, take it, you big lug. I'm all smoked out for the day. Who's this guy you're looking for? Hold your horses. I'm getting to it, huh? It was December 4th, and I remember because it was two days after my birthday. Only we weren't having no cake, huh? Somebody told me that 5,000 of our troops was dying every day. And there we were, killing, being killed, eating them chemo rations. And damn it, I wasn't going to shiver my ass off another night trying to sleep in no frozen foxhole. We just knew this little village in France. So, we went on patrol for a decent night's sleep. The village was all bombed out except for this little one-room schoolhouse. The schoolhouse? Yeah. So when we piled. What was the village? You would ask me that, huh? I never could pronounce him French names. Repeat, target appears destroyed, sir. Over. Roger, Rover 6. Let's get some breakfast. Over. That's a Roger, Rover 1. I'll buy the coffee, sir. Over. What the devil's hanging under your wing, Rover 6? Over. My bomb, sir. I figured I'd save them. Over. You figured? Over. Yes, sir. You boys blew that depot on the hill back there, so I thought I'd see if anything needed bombing on our way home, sir. Over. Those are 500-pound bombs, Rover 6. You don't drop them, you don't got the fuel to go home. Over. I just thought so I could. You follow my orders. You don't think. But 
the next morning, Pee Wee, this little run of a guy, he goes out to do his business, and coming into the village is this German tiger tank, and it spots him. Pee Wee comes blasting back in, stepping on everybody. It was curtains for us. He was in the wrong place at the wrong time. SOS, anybody? SOS, we got trouble! Go ahead, SOS, over. Who is this? Is this a bomber? That depends on your location. Now, who and where are you? Over. Captain Bravo, sir, and I don't know where we are. Ground air transmission's restricted, Sergeant. Where'd you get that radio? Over. I stole it, sir. Now, we got a German Tiger tank about to blow us to Kingdom Come, and we don't get some bombing power right now. Over. Goddamn freelancers. Looks like you've got your break there, Rover 6. Over. Roger, Rover 1. Sergeant, you gotta give me some idea of your coordinates, over. I don't know. Son of a bitch. Wait. Wait, I, I can hear your planes. It sounds like P-51, just to the east. Over. Rover 2, I'm gonna need some top cover. Permission to break formation, Rover 1. Over. Go, Rover 6. Rover 2. Over. It wasn't Mustangs. It's P-47 Thunderbolts. And if I ever saw an act of God, that Thunderbolt was my sign. For some reason, that pilot made a rookie mistake and he didn't drop his bombs during his mission. I didn't know it then, but it was, it was almost like he knew he had to help my men. Son of a bitch. You gotta disperse! I'm coming in too fast to control when they hit! If you don't stop that tank, we're dead anyway! Sergeant, over! Sergeant, one's in the hands, over! Anyone, anyone in Sergeant Brunzel's platoon, come in, over! Bravo, are you all right? Over! You got him, Flyboy! <laughs> right between the eyes! I thought you guys were curtains! Sorry, Flyboy, that blast knocked out of here! I may have knocked out this plane! I better get back to base, over! I owe you one, friend. My pleasure, boys. You be safe now. Out! And you barely made it back. Didn't you, Captain? <laughs> My plane almost broke in half when I landed it. You know you don't need to run from me. You knew all along, didn't you? Look, I don't know any more than you want me to know. I just know that money don't make the difference. Yeah. Well, if it's between saving my legs or not, it does. God damn it! Come on, elevator! Money didn't earn you those captains, boss. Yeah? Well, that was a different time and I was a different guy. No! Yes! No. Yes! I was the captain then. You know how I used to fly those planes? I, I didn't just sit in the cockpit and work the stick in the rudders. I was the plane. I was every bomb I dropped and I was every bullet I fired. I didn't just go on a mission. I was the mission. I was the captain. And who are you now? I don't know. Another dumb slob who's never cut out to invest his or anybody else's money. A hot shot who thought he could dodge creditors like I used to dodge that 88 millimeter flak. <laughs> thought I could bank on my old good luck to bring me through. You know? I'm so far in debt now. I even tried to bail myself out of the jam by betting a wad I didn't have. Everybody has bad luck. Yeah. Well, it wasn't luck. I was a fool. It's taken me seven years to find you. Seven years? Why? You ever heard of a tithing? What? A tithing. Like an orphan in a church. 
After that tank was hit and my men was all safe, my legs started getting all numb. I didn't even know it, but I'd taken a big piece of shrapnel just below the knee. Broke my leg clean in half. Docs couldn't save the leg. I hadn't realized it till just right then, but I'd become a different person. I got in the break I needed. I was laid up for six months while this big smiley guy named Leroy, he told me to get around on this. Leroy kept telling me that because I'd had a hard life, that I was a lucky son of a bitch. He used to tell me the bigger the challenges you got, the richer the expanses God grants you. Even though he was around a bunch of cripples, bathing their broken bodies, emptying their bedpans, he kept saying how all he saw was the shining lights. And Leroy gave them guys hope. During that time, all them old voices that used to tell me I was no good, Stop. And then one night I woke up and it was clear as a bell what I was here for. And it was you coming out of nowhere to stop that tank that rang that bell for me. Hey, wait a minute. What are you doing? I'm late. Now, I don't know what you did or what you're running from, but I want you to have this. What is it? It's my tithing to you. There's over 10 grand in here. Yeah. Uncle Sam's been sending me 200 clams a month disability for the past six years. That's your leg. Yeah. A lot of people told me I shouldn't do it, huh? Said I was crazy. But you know what that money is? Huh? That's a thousand bucks more in the amount of money I took all my years of cheating, cat burgling. Laying in that hospital bed all those months, I made a pact with myself. That I was gonna pay God back with interest for saving me. I, I thought about the church and, and an orphanage, but somehow this voice, he kept telling me to bring it to you. And that was the only choice that makes sense. What about your family? Don't you see, huh? What do you see? I wouldn't have none of that if it wasn't for you. You're like an agent of God that kick-started my life seven years ago. I don't care who or what you are now. I'm giving this money to the guy that sacrificed life and limb so I could have a beautiful wife and two beautiful sons. It was your limb that was sacrificed. That guy, he knew to do the right thing, no matter how hard it was to do. Before I came in tonight, I went to your house to try and find you. After your wife, Ann, told me you'd be here, she told me to tell you one thing. You saw Ann tonight? She told me to tell you. Your luck could never run out with her, kid.
Ralph. What'd you discover? You know? That night. That I was here to help people down on their luck. What, by being a cop? Hey. It's my turn to be an agent of God. Good luck, brother. Amen, brother.